Ji, assalamu alaikum guys. Here is our lecture related to introduction to different types of apparatuses which are used in chemistry lab. You can see in these diagrams that there are many apparatuses. Some of these are already in your mind. For example, you can see different types of apparatuses here. Might be you are aware of this microscope, but this is not used in chemistry lab. And there is a magnet over there. This is also not used in chemistry lab. There are certain other apparatuses which are used in chemistry lab. I'm going to describe all of these one by one. Let's see all of these. Guys, there is an apparatus here. And that is called as a safety goggles. You can see this thing that it has an elastic type of thing attached on both sides. So that it is stretchable and we can wear it while using uh while doing different types of the experiments so that our eyes can be saved from the effect of the different types of the chemicals okay so this is one of the operators which i have introduced to you people at the start okay now the first apparatus which we are going to discuss is uh, is a beaker we can see this thing that a beaker is an apparatus with comparatively a wider column we can see different type of the sizes of the beakers are available as well this beaker has a wider column so it is used for the rough measurement of the liquid we can roughly measure the liquid in this beaker we can use this beaker for the for the for the storage of the liquid as well we can take an appropriate a fixed a, an accurate amount of the liquid from beaker to any other operator so basically this liquid can be used in um, this beaker for the rough measurement okay so here there is another apparatus and that is called as um, a measuring cylinder a measuring cylinder is a calibrated apparatus calibrated apparatus means it has values written on it very clearly you can see from these diagrams that there are various sizes variable sizes for this uh, measuring cylinder one more thing which we can have um, with, about which we can take an idea from this is that it is for very very appropriate and accurate measurement we can measure up to a higher, uh, better extent, up to a higher extent of accuracy uh, through this apparatus. And this apparatus, you can see that 10 centimeter cube is at the bottom, centimeter cube at that is C, um, and then there is a 3 at the top, centimeter cube or the milliliter are the units for the measurement of the liquid. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 milliliter cylinder is in front of you. There are various sizes so we can use according to our demand. Okay. Now I'm taking you to the next um, side and that is a side for the volumetric flask or for the measuring flask. It is a flask with a long narrow neck and has one mark at the top of it. I'm showing you this diagram zooming it and you can see that there is an arrow at the neck and that is the calibrated mark. Okay. So this is a mark which is telling you that this um, this flask can measure like 25 centimeter cube or 100 centimeter cube or 1000 centimeter cube. This flask is also available in different sizes so we can measure different uh, volumes with the help of this flask. Okay. Then there is another apparatus. This is called as the pipette. A pipette is an apparatus which is used for the transferring of the liquid. A pipette is basically used in a specific exp experiment which is called titration. Guys, titration is basically a chemical reaction which is happening between the two reactants. One of the reactant is taken in an apparatus which is called burette. I will show you the burette as well. And the other reactant, other partner of this titration reactant is taken into a conical flask. I will show you a conical flask as well. Conical flask is also called as a laminar flask or it is also called as um, uh, titration flask. So this is a flask with a comparatively shorter neck and a broader bottom. I will show you the conical flask as well. Now to fill the specific amount of the liquid, specific amount of the partner, specific amount of the reagent, specific amount of the chemical into the conical flask, we are using this pipette. So reagent is basically any chemical which is using in any chemical reaction. So this pipette is used for transferring the liquid from any other apparatus to the conical flask specifically or any other apparatus. Uh, so this pipette is basically a liquid transferring apparatus 
whenever in paper four, which is called as the alternative to practical paper in 5070 or in paper six, which is the alternative to practical paper in 0620, if examiner is asking that how we can transfer this amount of a liquid from this to this. So whenever there is a word of transfer, you people should get that pipette will be the operators for transferring the liquid. Okay. So pipette is the operators for transferring the liquid. And one more thing before moving to the next slide, I would like to inform you that in uh, this pipette, a specific type of the operators which is used as a safety operators for the usage of the pipette. A pipette cannot be used as a straw. We cannot suck the liquid. We cannot, uh, we cannot have it by uh, using our mouth, this liquid, this, uh, this chemical. We cannot suck this chemical. So that, obviously, a chemical can go into the mouth of the student, can affect the health of the student adversely so be aware of this thing that a, a safety bulb or uh, the rubber pipette filler is the name of that specific apparatus in which this pipette will be adjusted properly and then liquid will move up into this uh, pipette and then can be shifted to the other apparatus so this safety bulb or rubber rubber pipette filler is a specific apparatus which is used in this pipette okay so here i have shown you different types of the pipettes and there are the pipettes which have marks on it and there are the pipettes on which there is only one mark remember this thing examiner can draw the wrong pipet and then can ask you what is the right way of the pipet look at here on this pipet okay this uh, pipet if i should show you a vertical pipet this is the c look at the c thing okay on this c pipet you can see this thing that there is uh, there is one mark at the top above that bulb okay so sometimes the examiner can draw this mark below this bulb. So there is a problem over there. So remember this thing that the mark should be above that bulb. Okay. So this is uh, this is the detail related to this weapon. I'm moving you to the next board. And this is the diagram of the conical flask, which is also called as a linear flask as well. Or it is also called as a titration flask. So a linear flask, titration flask, or the conical flask are the different names of the same flask. You can see it is also available in the various sizes. It is not used for the measurement of the liquid. It has certain marks, but it has certain uh, rough, you may say rough measurement, just like beaker as it has a wider column at the bottom. It has a small narrow neck because while, sh while doing this experiment of titration, we have to shake the mixture so that the chemicals, so that the reagent, the partners of the reactants may react with each other thoroughly. So it has a comparatively narrow neck, okay, so that the liquid may not jump out of the out of the flask, okay. So this is the apparatus which is used, which is one of the apparatus used in the titration experiment, okay. Now this is the apparatus about which I was talking and I have told you while using a pipette, a student must use this rubber pipette filler or uh, this is also called as a, this is also called as the safety bulb, okay. So you can use this thing, this uh, this uh, safety bulb in a specific way. I have uh, selected this diagram to demonstrate you how to use this uh, safety bulb or the rubber pipette filler. You can see this insert pipette pot here. So at, at this port, you will you are going to adjust your pipette from the top. Okay, and after that, you are going to press the A point at the top. This will release all the air. As a result, vacuum will be created. Then you are going to uh, press this S point, this siphon uh, over there will suck the liquid and the liquid will start moving up at this level, the mark, you will stop, uh, stop pressing this S point when the liquid will, when the liquid will approach this mark and then you are going to place the pipette along with this rubber pipette filler into an other apparatus, then press this E valve. As a result of that, it will be, um, it will become empty and we can say this thing that all the the liquid in that pipette will now be shifted to the other apparatus okay so this rubber pipette filler or the safety bulb will be used for the uh, for the safety precaution for the safety measurements uh, regarding this pipette remember this thing safety bulb or rubber pipette filler both names should be written in the paper okay
Now this is the apparatus which is called as China dish. China dish is made up of a China clay. That's why it has this name of China dish. One more thing you should know is this that China dish is basically used for evaporating the liquid. Sometimes we have a combination of liquid and solid and we want to evaporate that liquid at a quicker a quicker rate. So obviously we should have a, we should have an apparatus which has a comparatively broader column. We can keep that China dish uh, openly in the lab at the at the side, or you may keep it on the Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner is a specific burner uh, of uh, having uh, having a flame of a low scale, and in this way, this uh, China dish can be heated, and all the liquid. Uh, from that china dish can be removed okay so this is called as china dish i am taking you to the next slide this is uh, uh, called crucible you can see this thing that a crucible and china dish are different from each other look at the crucible okay crucible has a um, uh, has a lid on it as well we can keep that lid we can remove that lid if we are keeping that lid tightly it means that we don't want um, any air to come inside that crucible hence it uh, the air oxygen of the air may not affect the experiment if we are keeping that lid loosely it is an indication that we don't want that uh, that content to be get out of that crucible so all these measurements are taken uh, regarding crucible a crucible can be used for the performance of the liquids when we want to heat that um, substances of that reactant uh, substances of that reaction uh, to be heated as well so we can perform any experiment at a shorter scale at a smaller scale during heating as well we can perform any experiment at a shorter scale at a smaller level in any other container like a beaker like a china dish as well like a test tube i will show you a test tube as well but if we want to heat that the content of the reaction and we want to cover that as well so crucible is the best apparatus when we want to heat that experiment at a smaller scale and when when we want to perform that experiment at a smaller scale okay so crucible is an apparatus which has this uh, this cover with this as well sometimes the students are confusing um, they are getting confused about um, this china dish and this crucible so please be aware of the fact that a crucible is an apparatus which has this lid thingy at the top of it now i am taking you to the next board guys here is a here is a specific type of the apparatus which has three legs so this is called as a stand and it it as it has a three legs so it is called as a tripod stand okay so while drawing this uh, this stand so uh, obviously it is uh, difficult to draw the 3d diagram in the paper so there are two legs visible over there so students are getting the use what is the name of this apparatus so what is the name of this apparatus it is called as the tripod stand so examiner is asking sometimes in paper 4 or paper 6 that is called the alternative paper alternative to practical paper of both of the um, both of the boards so we can say it is called as a tripod stand okay now i am taking you to the next slide it is a specific apparatus which is called as a wire gauze it is a criss cross mesh of iron wires and it has a ceramic coating on it it is placed on a tripod stand i can show you a diagram yes there is a diagram over there okay guys i am i am going to zoom this diagram you can see this thing that the tripod stand is at um, a tripod stand is there and at the top of that tripod stand we have a wire gauze why wire gauze is there so that our apparatus may not fall into the triangle of that tripod stand may not fall onto the burner and the second thing is this um, to in, in addition to the support there is a second thing that there is a ceramic coating so that the flame of the uh, flame of the burner may not affect uh, the glass of the container similarly that that obviously that the glass will that glass can be blacky if the flame is not very proper if the flame is not getting uh, a sufficient amount of oxygen as a result of that the glass can be blacky so this ceramic coating is a coating which is made up of sio2 silicon oxide which can withstand a high temperature of the burner so all this is not only to give the support rather to give uh, to give the proper thorough heating uh, to this apparatus so this is the wire gauze and the tripod setup tripod stand setup okay 
now this is a specific apparatus you can see this thing uh, here uh, here the, the teacher is performing an experiment over there with students you can see this thing that uh, i am going to zoom this diagram okay so in this diagram you can see that um, that uh, there is a window type of thing and we can slide that window this diagram will will show it more clearly there is a window over there and there is a glass window we can uh, we can close that window we can open that window why this is so uh, you can see this thing that there is a, there is an exhaust type of thing okay so what is the purpose of this uh, fume cupboard sometimes there are certain experiments in which no2 gas nitrogen dioxide is the name no2 is the formula so2 gas sulfur dioxide is the name and so2 is the formula sometimes toxic gases sometimes poisonous gases sometimes such type of chemicals are releasing during the course of a reaction which can damage the laboratory environment which can damage the health of the people working over there in the lab so that's why such type of the experiments are should be performed in a fume cupboard if the all the fumes which are producing during a chemical reaction will be pumped out of that lab okay hence the lab the closed environment of the lab will not be will not be uh, damaged and will be remain helpful regarding uh, re regarding the work of the lab so this uh, this uh, fume cupboard is specifically for the poisonous gases sometimes examiner is writing zinc nitrate is undergoing thermal decomposition as a result of that zinc oxide nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas is 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 produced why student is performing this experiment in a fume cupboard so the answer is that that nitrogen dioxide is a poisonous gas is a gas which can cause acid rain is a poisonous gas can affect the health of the student so this type of the experiment should be performed in a fume cupboard sometimes examiner is asking that zinc nitrate is undergoing thermal decomposition here before time i am telling you what is thermal decomposition it is a chemical reaction in which we are giving a heat treatment to a compound and the compound decomposes itself into its components so examiner is asking why the thermal decomposition of zinc nitrate should be performed in a fume cupboard so what is the answer as uh, as thermal decomposition of zinc nitrate is producing nitrogen dioxide which is a poisonous gas so this experiment should be it should be performed in a fume cupboard so that all the fumes of uh, nitrogen dioxide can be removed it can be eliminated from the lab environment all right all right guys this was all for today and i will continue the lecture of uh, lab apparatuses from this inshallah thank you very much take care allah hafiz